The investment accounts that you might have heard of before in Canada are the TFSA and the RRSP. These are tax advantage investment accounts that are available to Canadians to open up for themselves. Then there's also the RESP, or the Registered Education Savings Plan. These accounts are meant to save for a kid's post-secondary education. They're typically opened up by either a parent or someone else on behalf of a kid who's likely going to attend more schooling after high school. Now the RESP as we know it today was created by the Canadian government in 1998, and this is when they added in a grant program to give money to people who are already putting money into a kid's RESP, and we're going to explain exactly how that works in just a second. But in general, if you're someone who wants to save an RESP for a kid in the future, or maybe you have an RESP yourself and you wanna know a little bit more about it, then in this video, we're gonna tell you everything there is to know. The first thing I need to mention is that just like the TFSA and RRSP, the word savings in the title of this account just shouldn't be there. And that's because the main benefit of opening up an RESP is that you can buy investments inside of it. Now, the reason you'd wanna be investing inside this account instead of saving is rooted in the main benefit. And that's the fact that this is also a tax advantaged account. Now let's explain exactly what the tax advantage is this time. So when it comes to TFSAs, you pay no taxes on the money in that account or any of the gains that it makes at any time, including in the future. Now with the RRSP instead, this time it's tax deferred. So you can reduce your taxable income now, and instead you pay taxes in the future when your income is lower. The RESP is kind of in the middle. You don't do anything with your taxable income right now, it doesn't decrease it, but your money can also grow tax-free. And as long as the money stays in the account, you pay no taxes on that money. So what about when you actually go to withdraw money out of the account? This is the fun part. When you go to take the money out of the RESP for the kid's education, at this time, the money that you contributed yourself can be withdrawn completely tax-free. But the income that was earned on top of your investments, that money is taxed but it's taxed at the kid's income tax bracket instead. The key to keep in mind here is that your kid's income tax bracket is likely gonna be a lot lower than you, so they'll pay very little taxes. So basically you put money into the account, it's able to grow tax-free for a long time, and when it comes time to withdraw it, part of it can be withdrawn completely tax-free, and part of it is taxed at a very low tax bracket. Amazing. Now this is exactly why you'd wanna use the RESP account to invest, because you get to see the real benefit of those tax-free gains. If you're able to put money into an account, see it grow tax-free, and have even more money on top of what you put aside yourself for your kid's education, you should definitely take advantage of that. Now we have some other videos on our channel that are all about actually buying safe passive investment options like index funds and ETFs that grow over the long term. The reason you'd want safe investment options in this case, as opposed to risky ones where you could potentially lose some of your money, is because you're putting money aside for a kid's education and you don't want to lose any of it. Now remember, you'd only actually lose contribution room if you sold your investments when they were down. So the other main reason for using an RESP for a child's education is that you can actually get free money from the Canadian government. They actually have this thing called the Canadian Education Savings Grant. Now, the way that this program works is that it gives every person who's contributing to an RESP a 20% match per account per child per year. So for example, if you were to contribute $2,500 into an RESP per year, then the government would also put in $500. Now, the key thing to remember here is that $2,500 is actually the maximum qualifying amount. So basically what I mean by that is that if you were to, if you were to put in $10,000 per year into an RESP, the government would still only add in $500. And then on the flip side, if you were to only add in $1,000 per year into an RESP, then the government would only put in $200. Now, even though they're willing to give you that $500 a year if you're someone who's contributing, there is still a maximum, like a total maximum amount that they're willing to part ways with, and that's $7,200. That's just the cap that they've put. Okay, so now something else that you really wanna keep in mind on top of that lifetime limit is that the government only matches $500 a year up until the kid turns 17. So that's why you really wanna maximize those contributions up until that time. After the kid turns 17, you can still add money into the RESP up to a max of $50,000 that we'll get to here in a second. And you can continue adding money in up to that $50,000 max until the RESP hits its 31st year of being open, 31st year. Then after that, now that you know that the contributions have to be done by the 31st year, something that's really important to remember is that the RESP can remain open until its 36th year. Basically what we're trying to say here and what you mainly need to remember is that the government has a limit on how much they're willing to give you per year and per lifetime. And then once we know that, then we can move on to how much you're actually allowed to contribute in the total RESP, which is $50,000. Now, once we know that, a key thing to remember here is that you can actually have the account open until the kid is in their 30s, and it can remain open until the account itself 
hits its 36th year. Basically, all this is to say that the money could actually just sit there and grow tax free until the kid is in their 30s or, you know, depending on, on when you actually open the account. And at, at any point within the 36 years of the account being open, you can actually withdraw that money and use it towards that person's education. Now, on top of this program, kids who come from lower income households, and we'll throw up on the screen what the actual income threshold is as of 2022, they're eligible for additional money because of this thing called the Canadian learning bond. Right? So in this case, they would actually be eligible for an additional $2,000. Also, if your household income is greater than $50,000 up to a max of $100,000, and once again, we'll throw up the exact household income numbers on the screen, you're actually eligible for an additional $50 a year. So instead of the normal maximum that they'll give you of $500, you're now eligible for $550. And now if your household income is below $50,197, then you get an additional $100 a year. So instead of the normal $500 max, that they'll give you, they'll actually give you $600. But the key thing to remember here is that there's still that $7,200 lifetime maximum that they're willing to give you. So really the goal here is to get you to that maxed out point. Really the key takeaway here is that by just opening an RESP account for a young person's education, if you just add money in, you're gonna get more money from the government that you didn't have before, right, for free. And once again, if you actually use the account to invest, then you're also capitalizing on those tax-free gains. You know, these benefits also answer the question as to why you would even use an RESP account to save, you know, invest for a young person's education versus using another account. Well, it's because of those extra dollars that you're actually getting from the government. And you know what? Let's actually break down the benefit of receiving $500 a year. So for example, sake, let's say you opened up an RESP for a young person from when they were born and you put in $2,500 a year. After 14 years, you would have contributed $35,000 and the government would have given you an additional $7,000. And then in the 15th year, you could add another $1,000 and then the government would then match that by giving you $200. So in total, you would have $43,200. So that would be $36,000 that you contributed and then $7,200 that the government gave you. Now, on top of the money being being added in, if you're also investing that money, then you're probably gonna see some pretty good returns in the market, right? So for example, if you were to only see a 6% return, and the reason I'm saying 6% is because this is definitely lower than the average. So if you were to only see a 6% return, then you would have an additional $21,000 on top of your 43,000. So in total, you'd have $63,000 for your child's education, which is pretty good. Okay, so now we get what's so great about the RESP account, from the tax free gains to the government matching, all the money for a kid's education. But just like the other tax advantage accounts, there are some rules to follow and some things you need to know about how the account actually works. First of all, an RESP account needs to be open on behalf of a kid who's already been born and who has a Canadian SIN. Then, just like the TFSA, there's also a contribution limit for this account too. And what's a little bit different and unique about the RESP's contribution limit is that it's not a set limit each year, it's not a changing limit each year, and it's not based on the person's age either. This time there's actually a lifetime maximum of $50,000 per kid. Now note that I just emphasized per kid. This is because it's not per RESP. Just like the other tax advantage accounts, technically one kid could have multiple RESPs, but that total limit of $50,000 would be across any and all accounts. The other important thing to know here is that that $50,000 contribution limit is just for your contributions. So it doesn't include the up to $7,200 in government matching that you could get or any of the money that grows on top of your contributions. So if you were following the example we did before where you put in $2,500 per month for 14 years and then add $1,000 in the 15th year, after that point, you'd only have $14,000 more in contribution room before you hit that max. Now, if you don't open up an RESP when the kid's born and you just wanna contribute in random chunks, in that case, just keep in mind that overall lifetime max of $50,000. Now, what if you were to go over the contribution limit? In that case, there are penalties just like the TFSA, and that's a 1% fee per month on the money over the limit, so up to 12% per year, until you remove that excess money. Now, let's look at that in an example. Let's say you put $60,000 into the RESP, and the limit's only $50,000, so that $10,000 is in excess. Now, on that money, you pay that 1% fee per month, so $100 in the first month, and then it would really grow from there. It's definitely not worth these high fees. 
Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that no one's warning you when your contribution room is getting close to being filled up. So you are in charge of that yourself. You'll only really be notified when you start getting charged fees. So make sure you keep track of it and you don't over contribute. The other thing I wanna highlight here is that everything we've gone over so far has really highlighted why it's the optimal case for you to put in $2,500 per month for the first 14 years at least to get that max government matching of $7,200. Let's look at another example here. Let's say that instead of doing that, that optimal case scenario, instead you put in $10,000 every four years instead. Over the similar time period, you'd have contributed about the same amount of money, but you would have gotten less money from the government. Now there's actually another specific and very important thing that I wanna mention about that $500 per year maximum the government will give you. And that's that you can skip on contributing one year and still make up for that money that you missed. Let's break this down with another example. So let's say that in year one, you contributed $2,500 and got the max $500 from the government. Then in year two, you did the same thing. Then somehow in year three, you totally forgot, it slipped your mind and you didn't add in any money. You can make up for that in year four by adding in $5,000 instead. In that case, the government would give you a matching of up to $1,000, $500 for this year and $500 for the year before that you missed since you added in that money this year instead. Now, an important thing to remember is that you can only make up for one missed year at a time. Let's say that instead you didn't add in money in year three or four, you forgot for two years in a row. And then in year five, you tried putting in $7,500. In this case, the government would still only give you $1,000. And that $500 you missed can never be given to you again. Okay, so now last up, we need to talk about what actually happens when you take money out of the RESP. So when it comes to withdrawing money from this particular account, it's a little bit different than the other registered accounts because it actually has a very clear purpose, right? You're supposed to use this account for education or school. So the main thing to understand here is that the money is actually split into three different categories, right? So there's the money that you put in, the money that the government put in, and then there's the income earned on the investments actually growing. Now there's different ways that you can actually withdraw from these three different categories but if we start off with number one so your money remember this is money that can actually be taken out at any time and it's actually referred to as PSCs or post-secondary education withdrawals now number two and three so the government money as well as the income earned from the investments this money is actually coupled together and this one actually does have to be used towards a young person's education so once they're enrolled in school it can then be taken out and used towards that purpose now when this money is withdrawn it's actually called an education assistance assistance payment or an EAP. Now, keep in mind, this money can actually only be withdrawn by the young person or the kid, as opposed to the parent or guardian. The reason being is that there actually has to be proof of enrollment, which can only be attained, at least in this case, by the young person. You should also use this money first because it's what actually has to be used towards education. And also remember that it will be included in the young person's taxable income for that year, which should either be low or potentially nothing. So to give you guys a little summary, the money that you put in can be withdrawn at any time and is tax free, whereas the government money and income earned money, that money can only be taken out once the young person's in school. And remember, it's also taxed under them. So use that portion first and then use your contributed portion last. Now, if your kid never goes to school, then no worries. Like you can still withdraw the money that you contributed rather easily and also with no taxes. But what you can't do is take out the money that the government added as well as the income earned from those investments actually growing. Your options are to either transfer that money, so the government money over to a sibling if they're below the age of 21. And if that doesn't work, then you can always give the government their money back. Now, when it comes to the income earned money, there's a few other options there. If you can't transfer that income earned into your personal RRSP, then you are allowed to withdraw it yourself, but you do have to pay taxes on it, right? And once again, it'll be under your tax rate, not the young person or the kid's tax rate. So obviously super high, plus a 20% penalty. So now the last thing that I wanna mention is that there are different types of RESPs depending on who's opening the account. So whether it's a parent, guardian, aunt, uncle, family, friend, whoever. Now, this video was already getting pretty long, so we actually decided to just keep things pretty simple and keep it to the basic RESP function. But we still want you guys to know that there are different accounts out there depending on who actually is opening the account. And you're, let's say you're not someone who's a parent with opening it up for their direct child. Now, if you've seen our past TFSA or RSP videos, then you know that we're working with CDIC on today's video. CDIC stands for the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation, and they insure bank deposits of up to $100,000 per category that are held at one of their member Canadian banks or federally regulated credit unions. Now, you automatically have their protection 
if you bank at one of their member institutions and if those institutions were to fail. They cover up to $100,000 in eight different categories. And one of those categories is the RESP. Now this eighth category is actually new as of April 30th, 2022. And the new update is that now both RESPs and our DSPs each have separate coverage of up to $100,000 each. Now overall, they cover savings and checking accounts, GICs and other term deposits and foreign currency, but they don't cover stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs or cryptocurrency. Something else to remember is that for eligible deposits held with an RESP, the overall limit is $100,000 per beneficiary. So per kid that's protected. Now, another big thanks to CDIC for working us with us today. And we'll have a link to them in our description box below and in our pinned comment. All right, guys, that's a wrap on the RESP. And once again, huge shout out to CDIC for working with us on this video. And yeah, we have actually two more videos left in this series. So we're gonna have RDSPs coming and trust accounts. So make sure you keep an eye out for that one. And yeah, as usual, if you guys haven't already liked the video, make sure you like down below. It really does help out the channel a ton. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed right there in the corner, and if you haven't seen any of our previous videos, make sure you check them out next door, door, we will be back. You know the vibes. Let's go.